The government's claims of an attempted coup plot with video and audio recordings detailing how Dr. Frederick P Mark Palm and three others in the grips of the law planned to overthrow the Akufuado government. The detail as we have been specific to this matter is the number of installations that these persons have targeted, including a government of the president or Jubilee House. These persons have built in the aim of using or not all force to seize the reins of government. Also, law school and trans exams failure, a case of outmoded method or deliberate attempt to bar potential from the law profession. Tonight, we hear from G Gimpa Rector. Drama through the last decade or so has created much iniquity and frustration on our law students and the structure of legal education. We have noted over the period the number of Ghanaian sons and daughters who have had to go to the Gambia to go and get professional education. And in business, Bank of Ghana set to introduce forward for, for sales for businesses and banks from the beginning of next month. The former Youth and Sports Minister Nilanti Van der Poel has endorsed the former GFE Vice President Fred Popo. Details later in sports. And later in the bulletin, we ask whether the church is able to question the source of income of their members who pay huge tithes and offerings. Those whose sources of income may be questionable, uh, looking at the kind of job that they do, kind of offerings and tithes that you bring uh, to the church. We are not taking it. It means, it means we, we don't want... We we'll hear from the General Secretary of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council who says the call will help deal with corruption in the country. And it's day four of our Joy Clean Ghana campaign in collaboration with the AMA. But some Ghanaians have been telling us the full meaning of AMA. Accra Metropolitan Assembly. So it stands for Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Accra Metropolitan Assembly. We have all that and more here on Newsnight. Headlines on Newsnight is brought to you by Eden Heights. Eden Heights, welcome home. My name is Evans. My name is Evans Mensah. I am MFR Paul. Would you join us with your thoughts and comments via WhatsApp on 244 Now, the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice Shraj has tonight responded uh, to suspended Public Procurement Authority PPA boss Ejenim Mwating Ejei's request for a public hearing in the case of conflict of interest against him. Mr. ABAJ's company was found to have sold contracts in Manasseh, Azuria Wune's investigative documentary contract for sale, after which President Ekufado filed a complaint to the Office of the Special Prosecutor and Shraj to investigate the matter. We also know that the Ghana Integrity Initiative also petitioned Shraj to, amongst others, uh, look into the same issue that was brought before Shraj. And Joy News has intercepted a copy of Shraj's response uh, to the PP, the suspended mm. PPA boss, Ejenim Mbwati uh, Ejei. What, what does it say? Um, uh, you know, uh, Ejenim Mbwati Ejei, uh, on the back of that particular documentary by Manasseh Zuria, when he uh, wrote to Shraj, when Shraj began its own investigations into the conflict of interest uh, aspect of this, and he demanded from Shraj, that Shraj gives him uh, a, a, a full public hearing of the complaint. He wants the cameras to be in the room when Shraj hears this. Well, Shraj, in the response tonight, uh, says that um, they uh, confirms that they are conducting preliminary investigations into the complaint before considering whether it should proceed further with a full investigation or otherwise. Now, Shraj says that its investigation process is governed by law. And, and quotes the law to back the point. In essence, saying that uh, in conducting a hearing, they, they are obliged to give a, a fair and impartial uh, hearing to the person accused, including the fact that the public may be excluded from an investigation conducted by the commission. Now, according to the commission, therefore, uh, it has the discretion to exclude the public from the conduct of its investigations. The commission will, at the stage of full investigation, because at this point they're just doing a preliminary probe, at that stage when they get to a full probe, 
they will consider a number of factors, including the nature and character of investigation required uh, by this complaint. The Commission may also adopt a variety of methods, including in-camera hearing, uh, public hearings, or both. Uh, and they conclude in a statement which is signed by Joseph Wittar, who is a head of Shraj, that under the circumstances, the Commission's decision on his request for a public hearing will be meaningfully determined after concluding their preliminary investigations and examining other factors as appropriate. And this is signed by Joseph Wittar. Okay, so we're still working the lines to be able to speak to lawyers for um, suspended PPA boards in the stretch hearing. AJ Nimboating, AJ, that's um, lawyer Yao Pong, we're told, is a lead counsel. And as and when we're able to raise him, we'll get their reaction uh, to this latest response from Stratch to their request for a public hearing in this conflict of interest case before Stratch as we speak. But let's move on to uh, some other stories now, because when four people, including Dr. Frederick McPalm, arrested for alleged coup plot appear in court on October 9, state prosecutors will make available to the court video and audio recording cataloging the alleged intention to overthrow uh, the government and destabilize the country. That's according to Information Minister Kojo Ponkroma. The four are currently in prison custody after being slapped with five counts including conspiracy to commit crime, manufacturing of arms and ammunition and possession of explosives, firearms and ammunition without lawful authority. The suspects and their lawyer, uh, Mr. Adawudu, are of the firm belief that the whole episode is a state-sponsored plot designed to denigrate them. But speaking to join News Information Minister Kojo Ponkrumah said concrete evidence will be adduced uh, to the court soon. including at least one officer uh, have been detained and are being interrogated um, as a result of uh, the investigations that are going on into this matter. That uh, that interrogation is um, uh, ongoing and that when they are done, they will also be put before the appropriate forum and charged accordingly. And I think that the important thing for everybody to do is to be calm and to allow the processes and the law enforcement agencies to go through that processes and to all unfold. Uh, the evidence that they inform us they have, including uh, audio visual recordings, etc. They will have to make all of that evidence before the courts of competent jurisdiction for a uh, proper adjudication. You and I and um, all of us listening or watching do not have the capacity to litigate this matter on television or radio or in our social media groups. And what we need to do is to allow the courts and the prosecutors to do a diligent job, one that will satisfy all of us at the end of the day. And I'm sure you've seen the social media uh, commentary on this. Um, what's, what's your reaction to the way this has been received in certain circles? Uh, those who suggest that the details as put out doesn't fit the description of an attempted uh, plot to overthrow the government. Well, um, I think again this morning as I spoke to one of your colleagues, Daniel Dazi, I mentioned to him that we have to be fair to some of the analysts that you are calling and inviting to uh, purport to analyze what they haven't seen. Um, I have heard reports of some analysts making comments. And the question I ask is whether or not these analysts have seen the full body of evidence that is available. And the evidence available, as you just heard him confirm at the top of the of, of that interview, is includes uh, audio and video recordings, secret recordings. And the sources in government uh, tell us that they, uh, they they infiltrated the ranks of the of the alleged uh, coup plotters uh, for 15 months. They infiltrated the ranks. Had a lot of the intelligence officers wore uh, secret cameras, and they have a lot of their planning. On, on tape, which they plan to produce in court when the case properly starts. Well, uh, today we've also been hearing from a, uh, a man, one of the uh, architects of that June 4 uprising, uh, Osahene Boatejan, who has uh, cautioned government to tread cautiously in investigating the attempted coup plot involving military officers who we know uh, many of them are, are being held uh, in the wake of the investigations carried into this plot. This particular incident has a tendency of inflaming soldiers and professionals. It makes, it makes even though they're tired, you know, it makes us of us very concerned and angry. Mm -hmm. And some of us have our children and cousins and nephews still in the service. So you are creating 
a cool psychosis as a way of solving your problem and you are replacing it with another set of problems, mm -hmm. which is not advisable at all. Because that's why I always say that you shouldn't describe me as a security expert. A security expert, yeah, you can be a professor of security okay. without holding a gun. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> there's a difference. According to this man, according to this man, according to this man, mm -hmm. makes you only an expert, but not make you a, 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 a practitioner. When they are giving information of that nature to the public, mm -hmm. they should see it. They are not under pressure. If you have called the people, you have called them. Mm -hmm. You take them to court. And the information will come from the court and not from the government. Mm -hmm. Because the way I package information you know, mm -hmm. suggests to say uh, they are not serious. If we all agree that we should elect our leaders mm -hmm. through the ballot box but not through the bullets, then we should not entertain mm -hmm. any suggestions of coup making in this country, especially if it is designed to overthrow a civilian, unarmed civilian administration like this one. It's not a fair contest. We should sift the information carefully and avoid doing propaganda with it. Let the truth come out and know where the truth lies and the appropriate punishments. There should be no behind-the-scenes political uh, control of the trial. Okay. I would advise that because if, if they do, it can backfire. You heard there, Osahene Bwachija. Now, speaking on the Super Morning Show, however, Deputy Attorney General Joseph Diendiok Pemka said the charges could change to treason after his office has reviewed the full dockets which the security agencies will present to them. If we come to a determination as an Attorney General, after they have submitted to us a full duplicate docket from the police, and we do a review, a critical review, and come to a conclusive determination that the conduct of the accused persons, based on available facts, and based on available evidence, amounted to an attempt to subvert the security of the state or overthrow the government, then the charges will change. It will change to treason. But that will only be upon receipt of the com of completed docket and a careful review and scrutiny of same. If we make that determination, the charges will change. So uh, the charges we, we found yesterday, remember that by our constitution, we cannot hold an accused person beyond 48 hours without putting him before court. You are unable to conclude all investigations and build a docket within 48 hours. So then, the police at that stage, rightfully, well, based on available evidence to them, at the point that they want to put you in court, prefer charges that they find maintainable in court. The charge of possession of ammunition without lawful authority is a first-degree felony. And if you are convicted on it, you can be sentenced to life in prison if, if you are found guilty of that offense. Mm -hmm. It's a very serious offense indeed. And people uh, may, may have expected to have seen certain charges they haven't seen. But equally as serious are the charges that have been presented against the accused persons. If those charges are proved in any competent court, at the end of it, I can tell you that the maximum sentence for uh, charges under Section 192 of the Criminal Offences Act is life in prison because that's a first degree felony. Well, the uh, Ghana Medical Association, remember the one of the uh, prime suspects in this particular case, uh, Dr. Mark Palm, a, is reported to be a doctor who runs a, ho a hospital. The Ghana Medical Association has been digging into his uh, his his credentials, mm -hmm. and they have told us that they are planning to issue a statement on on that particular finding. And when we have it, we'll bring it to you. Also, the uh, Health Facilities Regulatory Agency. It's in the process of actually downgrading that Citadel Hospital, which the uh, the Information Ministry statement said became the the base uh, for the manufacture of the of the weapons. the The Health Facilities Regulatory Agency is in the process of downgrading that particular facility. It was given a license uh, in September 2018 to operate as a primary uh, hospital. Uh, they had two doctors at that time, which qualified them. Uh, to hold that particular license. And subsequently, one of the doctors had resigned. Uh, before the incident last Friday, the uh, the military and the interagency interventions there, the Health Facility Regulatory Agency tell us that they were already in the process of uh, reviewing that particular license and downgrading them to a clinic. They had already invited the doctor in question 
uh, uh, to as a part of the process. And in the wake of the revelations that the premises of the hospital uh, was used allegedly uh, for the manufacture of arms, they had sent the men there as of yesterday, uh, but the place was closed, and they they are sure that a lot has been done already uh, to again look at the license that uh, the hospital uh, was operating with. And uh, there's a lot happening on in this front, and already we also know that several soldiers are still being detained under and, uh, and the military rules uh, as part of the investigations. If we get more, we'll bring that to you. Now, we'll take a quick break here on News 19. Still to come, law school and trans exams failure, a case of outmoded method or deliberate attempt to bar potentials from the law profession. Tonight, we hear from Gimpa Rector, Professor Bonzi Simpson, an earlier speech about the same issue. Ghana, through the last decade or so, has created much iniquity and frustration on our law students and the structure of legal education. We have noted over the period the number of Ghanaian sons and daughters who have had to go to the Gambia to go and get professional education. And then later, we'll hear from the uh, General Secretary of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, who has been defending his call uh, for churches to probe the backgrounds of individuals who give hefty tithes in church. Stay with us. Those whose sources of income may be questionable, uh, looking at the kind of job that they do, kind of offerings and tithes that they'll bring uh, to the church. We are not taking it. It means, it means we, we don't want... Your success, our passion. Ma, please give me your phone. Let me make a quick call. So you're still on that network that gives you fear, data, and talk time. When Vodafone has double the red one, red two, and red five offers eh? for five cities, Chikra. You get 250 minutes to call all networks, hey. 250 megabytes data, and more. I'm moving to Vodafone today. <laughs> Switch to Vodafone to enjoy double into swore on red bundles of one, two, and five CDs. Enjoy double talk minutes to call all networks. Networks and double data to browse. Vodafone always gives you more. Dial star 200 hash to subscribe now. Terms and conditions apply. The future is exciting. Ready? Thank you, folks. On my air list today, show some love for Contractor EB. <laughs> <laughs> so, Contractor, yeah. what do you think about the country's changing skyline? Oh, send them down there, show you, man. Across skyline, they change you, pop, 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 pop. Wow. Contractor, don't you get worried when you hear of buildings collapsing? I'm not from a nice one on Tassam. Mm-hmm. it is the lackability of using low quality product, too. Please explain why. Yeah, cement is a no quality on your gasm. Village of FUC way. It was built with gasm. Yeah. Says so the gasm, they all construct. Gasem, three cement grates, greater value. Gasem, the nation builder. Joy 99.7 FM. As I listen to news tonight here on Joy 99.7 FM, I want to hear from you. Send me a WhatsApp, 0244-340-437. My name is Evans Mensah. And I am MFA Paul. Uh, MFA, it's a multi-million dollar worth uh, diamond mine. And it, right now, uh, there is a raging battle over its control between the Jospon group of companies, which is which also owns Zoom Lion, and the government. Today, the, uh, the head of the State Interest and Governance Authority, uh, Stephen Asamoah uh, led a high-power team 
uh, to the mine in Akwetia and came away talking tough, dismissing claims by the Jospon Group that they had invested $20 million uh, into the mine. We understand from our reporter who traveled with the team that they are presently uh, uh, armed military officers on the premises uh, as government had decided to take over uh, that particular mine. Um, there is also a case that the uh, Jospon Group of Company had insisted is in court and should stop the government and Asama Boateng from going ahead to hold on to the mine as 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 has been done right now. Asama Boateng insists that that isn't the case and that uh, he's called the bluff that they could uh, sue him for contempt if there's anything uh, buying uh, him from going ahead to sell off that particular mine once the processes are done with an interim uh, management committee. On top story, we spoke to the head of communications with Jospon, and uh, she denies the claims made by uh, Sama Boateng that they have not invested $20 million uh, into the mine. Plus, she says that they, uh, they, the $17 million, as Sama Boateng describes as peanuts, that mm -hmm. they, was the price for the mine was set by the Diversity Implementation Committee. They, paid, they so far paid $3.8 million, and there's an arrangement with government that when uh, Zoom Lion and others are paid what state owes them, they'll use the proceeds to pay off uh, what they owe. Uh, Mr. Samar Boateng himself uh, joins us on the line right now. Mr. Boateng, thank you for your time here on Newsnight. Good evening, um, Evans. Yes, uh, we 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 um, less than thirty minutes ago spoke to the uh, heads of uh, head of communications for the Jospon Group, and they are quite clear that there is a case in court that bars yourself and the government from going ahead to still control the mine and visit the place today the way you've done, and that in fact when they they come to that bridge, the contempt proceedings will properly begin. Thank you, Evans, and um, welcome. Uh, let me say hello to your uh, your terrorist listeners. Evans, um, I I don't know. I listened to the lady talking, and um, I don't know what she's talking about. Um, there isn't any court case. They they went to court. I've seen that 24th May um, writ, which they did not send the Attorney General with a required uh, day, uh, notice period. And the case never even never saw the light of day. And and I am I am working with the legal basis on which the whole concession or the divestiture took place. That is the fundamental agreement I'm talking about. I mean, some other thing I have about, I have seen about sales and purchase agreement. Yeah, I'll, I'll come know, to I'll come to the agreement, but on, just on the question of whether or not there's a case in court, I have seen. I have seen I have seen the Attorney General's response to the case in court, which was filed on the 26th of August 2019, uh, signed by Sylvester Williams, of the Chief State Attorney. In fact, the state has entered an appearance, and that is an admission that the state is fighting a case which has been brought. Well, well, well Evans, I am telling you, if they have a case and they think we have acted against the court, they have a right to go to court. I'm telling you this. No, they, they are already in court. So let them be. Let but, the court decide. But their point is that whilst the case is being uh, contested in court, the Attorney General is defending the state, you are already going ahead to make pronouncements and I, act I, 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 and I ways to save their cases. I have a, I have a, I have a, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. If you have to the question, go on. No, no. I mean, simply saying that you cannot do what you're doing now when the case hasn't been determined. Even listen. My job is to protect the state's asset. I am not in the mood and in a, in a business of um, waiting for state asset to be dissipated. Let the attorney general, if there is a case, which I don't think there is one, and I have not been advised there is one, and I, the last time I, before I moved in, I was with the attorney general. So if there is a case and they want to go ahead, let the lawyer do that. I am doing my job. I am the director general of a state entity. And my assets that I oversee are being misused and not being paid for. And I'm not going to allow those, um, uh, uh, the dragging of it to delay and waste our, uh, the state assets. If you guys think that the state should, dis should just dissipate that asset by, by the way it's going now, you can go ahead. But I'm not going to allow that. And let the court tell me to stop it. So they should they can go ahead. So, so on, until, the court, until the court gives an explicit uh, instruction on this matter, you're going ahead with the process? I have a fundamental legal basis on which I have moved. Which is what? 
which is the agreement that he should be doing certain things, and which he did not. Or they should, as a company, did not. And in the same agreement, it is agreed by the purchasers that the state has a right to re-enter, to repossess if they breach the agreement. What more do I need? Did the Attorney General the advise... Tell me, did the state, did the Attorney General advise the action that you have, have been taking now on the back of that agreement? Evans, Evans, if, 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 if I don't have a basis, I will never move. I'm just asking the simple question, know, if you can confirm. I I sorry? If you can confirm for me if indeed the Attorney General, having looked at the agreement as you have uh, quoted from, uh, advised Why do you want ahead? to repeat what I just said to you? That I was with the Attorney General just some few days ago. Why do you want to repeat what you're saying? Oh, you, you say you were with her, but I'm asking whether she advised that you could go ahead I and do this. I was with the Attorney General's department. I have been with the Attorney General's department. We've been up and down. We've been This legal matter has been tossed up and down. If the Attorney General had told me I should stop, I would. But did she say you, you should, there is nothing. But did she say you should go you ahead? Stop me. Evans, um, I don't know how journalists... Um, let me put it this way. I, I'm, I'm amazed at how a state asset would be dissipated. Everybody wants to be questioning the base of an estate agency protecting the asset. I don't have a clue. Mm. Why? You think there's a court case where so I should allow the, somebody who would uh, breach a simple agreement that they have signed? And which agreement gives the state um, the right to repossess? I should wait. If they think I haven't waited and they want to go, I'm giving you the clue. They should go ahead and say, oh, listen, now we've got a case, court case, so they cannot work. Is they say, are they telling me that individual private owner uh, or the entity is telling me until they determine and how long it takes, I can say, to lose all the, uh, the assets and the properties and the materials and everything there? Uh, on the substantive... Is that, is, that, is that where the suggestion is coming out from? On the substantive... I have moved. I have moved. Mm -hmm. I have moved. If they do not understand and they think that's a court issue, let them proceed. On the substantive matter, though, of first the $17 million the uh, mine was priced at, and they concede, um, once you listen to that interview, you will know this, that in fact, in the last seven years, they've only paid $3.8 million of that $17 million. But she says that um, <laughs> there is an arrangement with the government, uh, successive governments, that when government pays their other business interests, then they will use that proceeds to pay off the $17 million. And that because that hasn't happened is the reason why they haven't paid uh for the cost of the mine your reaction even as, even as i listened to her she was being dodgy which successive government she should start from which government and who they were dealing with and where it is written that the government should use a pussy from somewhere and why is it written and i i heard her say that it's being discussed it's ongoing who are you with who who did they sit down with me or the former dic they said they're them you see they're, they're just trying to they want to delay, they want to keep time, they say, come to hold on to something that belongs to the state, and they're using jargons. I am not interested in that. On the 20 million investment, you heard her say, you hear her say in that interview that they, if you look at where they were in 2011 when they first took over the mine to now, um, because you don't, they say it came because you don't have the benefit of the 2011 state of the mine. That's why you're making the claim that there's no 20 million investment. In fact, they said the, the hospital is functioning, and yes, she has made there's no electricity. But the worker, the fact that the workers are there, she says, alone, is it's it's is uh, is evidence enough to show and that they're putting someone. And I heard you ask, I, I heard you ask her that um, so the money was used to pay salaries, and she went around and around and around in blocks. Um, events. Um, I have all the records of how when the state was. The, the, the company was arrested. I have I have information on on what they claim they were going to do with the entity they bought, and the promises and the and the consideration amounts and everything. I have all the information. They have not done any of those things they said they were going to do. So I don't know where if it is a, a matter of a staff being there. That is the twenty million worth of investment, and I heard they're talking about bills they paid and all that. If they, they, that's the investment they're talking about. Uh, yes, I have gone past that stage, and I don't think we should entertain in these things. When the cameras come and they show you what they picked up, you would understand what I'm talking about. Then you probably will ask uh, your cameraman, who are there? They, they talk to the, 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 the staff as well as the, the management. And the hospital, it has a sorry state. I'm not sure what they meant by the hospital was not working. It's always been working. And, 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 and your, your cameraman will tell you, or they will show you the pictures. 
you know, so I'm, I, I'm, you see, my dad is not to be talking. I'm, I thought I was saying this over and over. Until this matter came me, you have never heard me talk since, since I left the information ministry. And I do not intend to be conducting my affairs on radio. I do not intend to. But I've, I've, I've done that because there's, there's been a, a wave and a wave of uh, journalists who uh, want to skew it and dig like, you, you You are telling me that I should not move. If I move and they are not happy with it, they go to court. If they have to go, they have to. But I am a state agent with the authority to oversee the administration of the state interest. And I'm doing exactly that. I'm telling you to you that they have not invested anything. Let them come and prove it. And then we will do the analysis of it. But nothing of that sort. They were given a 17 million offer. And with the target uh, payment system, they, they failed to adhere to that. If they are saying that the government owes them whatever, they should go there and demand the, the payment of, their, of their, their, their money. And then they come and settle this one. But that is even we passed that stage long time ago. We you... engage anybody, we call them, they will not engage. We, we, thought, we send letters, they will engage. Immediately they notice that we were taking action. Then they cry for our neighbor, people trying to defend them. Let them go to court. My I don't, attorney general will be there. And if I am wrong, I told the Attorney General, I wouldn't have moved if I didn't contact them. And very finally, there's something you said um, when you visited the uh, site today, What, uh, if we can clarify for me. You suggested that when the Interim Management Committee does finishes its work, the plan is to um, sell off or, or, or open a bid for anybody interested to, to put in a bid and purchase the mine. Is that the plan? Well, right now, the interim management have been given the responsibility to uh, pr uh, bring up uh, proposals, uh, which will come to my table. We would look at it with my team. And then uh, if there is a need for a new uh, uh, proposal uh, in terms of investment uh, or, or to get other investors to come in, that is a decision the state will take, and it will go up as far as to uh, the cabinet. Um, the decision would not be made now. I mean, we are in a rush, but we are not going to stay there for too long. Uh, my job is to protect it. My job is to make sure that the state doesn't lose out. Once I do that, the, the way forward, the interim management committee would make up a proposal, and then we will take it to the, um, the cabinet level to make a decision on that one. As of now, just one is out of the picture, correct? Com completely. I'm grateful, sir. That is uh, Stephen Asamoa Boating, uh, heads the, uh, the State Interest and Governance Authority. Listen to News Night on Joy, 99.7 FM. Let's do business now. Hello, George. Hi, Evans. And uh, Kevin, the Bank of Ghana said to introduce a forward forex sales uh, for businesses and banks from the beginning of next month will tell you what means for businesses who are interested in purchasing dollars through the bank their banks from the bank of ghana and indigenous oil firm springfield expected to commence drilling on its uh, west cape three points area from the beginning of possibly that is from next month the business news on news nights is brought to you by mtn business welcome to the new world of business and kingdom books and stationery your number one stop shop for all your office essentials and first national bank we are the bank that understands your business first national bank how can we help you so everyone says i'm a cosia filler but it's not like i'm nosy you or go out to find out the latest filler <laughs> It's just that I get 50 megabytes of data free after paying for only the first minute of every call. And so I just keep discovering stuff minute after minute. That's how come I was minding my business, scrolling through my timeline, and I found out Coco has a new baby. Hmm. Oh, and lastly, I learned Ken won the lottery. You see, Ken is my brother's friend. So hello. Look who's about to roll with the rich and famous. <laughs> Enjoy even more value with empty and free after one. You only pay for the first minute of your call on MTN Free After One. And the rest is free. Plus, you enjoy free 50 megabytes worth of data to browse your favorite sites. Compare where? Open there. So dial star 315 hash to sign up. Good day for you everywhere you go. Terms and conditions apply. The Kingdom Boots.
takes this year back to school promotion is in conjunction with Satidia Supermarket. Buy school items worth 100 Ghana cities from Kingdom Books and get 12% discount voucher to purchase from Satidia and vice versa. School items include textbooks, pens, pencils, erasers, exercise books across all Kingdom Books branches in Accra, Tema, Kamasi, Takradi, and Cape Coast. Kingdom Books, where quality and affordability is assured. For further information, call 0302-764209 or 0302-746101 and 0501-401050. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to Business on News. Now, from the beginning of next month, businesses to their banks can make a request for Forex that they actually need in 30 days. The initiative, which is known as the Forward Auction of Forex, can allow banks to request for Forex needed from 7 days to 45. Now, this, so let's say, make an offer today and the transaction with C will be sealed for necessary supply on the day that you actually need it. Let's hear from Stephen Opata. He's ahead of financial market at the Bank of Ghana. It's down in the market, but there was not that much liquidity. So with this, we are giving more liquidity to the market. And also very important here is that if you recall when we did the market conduct rule, one of the things that we came up with was to ban short dated uh, swaps. That uh, if you are a non resident player, for example, the minimum tenor for a swap you can do was 90 days. Now, some investors have expressed concern about this. This is a way of addressing that concern in the sense that if you are a non resident investor who has invested in our CD bonds and you have coupons maturing, you can plan properly if you want to roll over your investment or if you want to take your money out. An avenue for all users of Forex who may need Forex in the future to plan towards that so that you don't need to come and buy forest or be rushing to buy forest now. It really gives more liquidity and more certainty to users of forest. According to the Bank of Ghana, to issue a one-week notice before the sale of these forex for businesses and commercial banks, they should give businesses an opportunity to plan well for their forex need. Now, the Securities and Exchange Commission has intensified as warning against firms that are offering guaranteed interest on products sold to clients. The regulator earlier this year directed firms to stop offering promised interest on products of the development is said to have contributed to challenges faced in this sector. Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Reverend Daniel Obama, said this at the launch of two mutual fund products by the First Finance Corporation. It's important for investors to bear in mind that licensed fund managers of the Commission are not supposed to sell guaranteed products or products that promise a specified return over a specified period of time. The investing public is also encouraged to alert the Commission if they should encounter any licensed fund manager flouting this directive. Reverend Daniel Bamitete is the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Indigenous oil firm Springford is expected to commence drilling on its deep water West Cape three points in the western region from next month. This will happen after the drill ship that is the center fort bears at the country's waters. The first week of October, Chief Executive of Springfield Oil Group, that is Kevin Orchard, has been speaking to Joy Business about this development. This phase, I would say, is one step away from um, being in production. So we are just one step away. We just drill this. We will ascertain you know, how, how the resource will come out. And first of all, we have to find, make sure that there's commercial quantities and how it will come out, how it will flow to, to the sea level and you know, to be processed and beyond. For you, Mr. Kevin, how do you take this development? Yeah, I must honestly say that I feel like we are blessed um, to be in this opportunity. If you think about it, on the entire African continent, some amazing companies, African companies doing you know, very, very well, but they are all either onshore or shallow water. The deep water area have been primarily left for, you know, Western non-African companies. So to think of it as Springfield is the first, for us to think that we are the first company in the whole world, I mean, just an African company, to actually own and operate and to drill in deep water, I think it's something that has to be celebrated by all Ghanaians. Kevin Archery is Group Chief Executive of Springfield. 
Now, fiber optic operator, main one, has actually justified prices paid on data services in the country because of the high infrastructure cost. Internet services provided in the country has in recent times been criticized over the high cost. Now, speaking at a sign-in agreement between a subsidiary of the company and engineering firm, Rendezvous Chief Executive Funko Peke said the cost and quality of data can only be enhanced with adequate investments. Um, data is expensive in Ghana. Data is expensive in a lot of our markets um, because infrastructure is limited. As we start seeing more infrastructure come in, facilities such as this where data is housed locally um, in close proximity to the market, critical mass in usage also brings down the unit cost. We would expect costs to drive to go down. Main one, um, in the first instance, with our submarine cable uh, nine years ago, changed the access to data and the pricing of data um, all across West Africa. And we expect with these further investments, we will continue to accelerate. Chief Executive of Main One, Funke Opink, and the Norwegian government is supporting the Ghana Employers Association to enhance skills of female top management executives in the country. Chief Executive of the Ghana Employers Association, Alex Frimpon, has been explaining the idea behind this move to joy business. So in discussions with our counterparts from Norway, we wanted to learn from them how they have developed women in the corporate world, and hence this uh, female future program Ghana was born. What support specifically is the Norwegian embassy or the Norwegian government bringing on board? As I say, they hold the copyright to the female future program, and there are certain basic principles that the program entails. It goes through three key development modules, leadership development, rhetoric, that is communication, and board competence. The three together will prepare the women adequately to assume higher responsibility at the decision-making body level in organizations. And that's the chief executive of the Ghana Employers Association, that is Alex Frimpon. And before we go, the executive board of the IMF today has selected a former chief executive of the World Bank, that is Christina Jojevi, as the new managing director of the fund. She is expected to serve for a five-year term starting from October 1, 2019. Madame, the Madame is to succeed Christine Lagarde as the first person from an emerging market to lead the IMF since its inception in 1944. Bulgarian National was an interim president of the World Bank Group starting uh, from 2010. She also was a member of the European Union or a commissioner of the European Union, actually responsible for humanitarian aid and crisis response, as well as the vice president for the budget and human resources. So there is a new chief executive for the IMF. We look forward to the success that she will also chalk. Yeah. Right? Well. Okay. Thank you very much, George Riafe, uh, with the latest from the world of business. Now, 1,692 students who had hopes of entering law school this year. Is it one of, are you one of them? No. Do you have, a, have hopes of going to the law school? No. Oh, you have, you've abandoned that. <laughs> on the Me back I've of, abandoned that. You abandoned it. I concede. On the, on the back of the mass failures. I concede. Some writing for six times. I, con I, I, I seriously I concede. I have the heart if you consider that 128 out of 1,000 and... Eight, 820. Passed. Mm -hmm. you, you, if you're like me, you throw in the towel. And the, that result also comes only a month after a mass failure was recorded in the bar exams as well. We had oh. only 91 students passing and being called to the bar. Well, this development has prompted calls for a review of the selection. And it happens. This is annual ritual. Um, yeah. Every year it happens. We call Almost for... Almost like the floods. Uh, thank you very much. An assessment structure of pursuing law in the country. It's the same call again. Uh, we'll hear from some of them who called into the Super Morning Show, those who have been failed um, today. But first, earlier this year, the rector of Gimpa, Professor Bobonzi Simpson himself, at a graduation ceremony in July this year, also had uh, some really tasty things to say about the process. We have noted over the period the number of Ghanaian sons and daughters who have had to go to the Gambia and Nigeria and other Commonwealth jurisdictions to go and get professional education to return and rope themselves into professional legal education at the higher end. We have noted all these. It is not satisfactory. We have noted that graduate legal education is now unfortunately and shamefully being subordinated to its counterpart, professional legal education. So that now more people are doing masters in law, not because they necessarily wanted to,
but as a stopgap measure to see how they get and they are wait to get into law school. The time will come when someone who holds LLM will be treated as a failed candidate to pursue LLB. Yet, a lot of faculties in the law school require LLMs and beyond. In many parts of the world, at the judiciary, if you want to get to the superior court, high court and above, you require an LLM. Must the LLM candidate be the person who failed to enter law school? Now, he also says the situation will adversely affect the efforts to ensure that there are more lawyers in the system to run the country's legal institutions, especially with the creation of the six new regions. I am of the firm view that the number of persons required to service a legal sector is way in excess of the capacity of the Ghana School of Law presently with its satellite campuses, one of which fortunately is located here at Gimba to handle. We need therefore to undertake a study of the legal sector to see not only the proficiencies and competencies that are required, but also the numbers that are required. In the last three or so months, we had additional regions to make a total of 16. The country needs magistrates and circuit court judges and justices across all. They need to be trained from the legal sector. Each municipal, metropolitan and district assembly requires a full-blown legal department of no less than 10 well-trained lawyers. The Attorney General's department, even prosecutions alone, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution and his staff can take the entire group of lawyers required in this country. I am respectfully submitting that if we do a proper needs assessment, we will come to the conclusion that between ministries, departments and agencies, district, metropolitan and municipal assemblies, the judicial system and its courts, and of course private legal practitioners, as well as the parastatal state enterprises. There are far many more people who are required for the legal sector. And if we then do this study, it will lead us to two. If the Ghana School of Law is not presently able to handle the numbers, the people who train, the people who go out to train, the people who come to train as lawyers can train. So you hear there, Professor Ebo Bonzi Simpson, he's the rector for GIMPA, raising the concerns about the inadequacies in the system. But let's check on the situation at the regional levels. We've, uh, we have on the line uh, the Bono Regional Bar Association Chairman, lawyer Alfred Tia Yeboa. We are grateful for your time here on Newsline. So you oversee uh, the three regions in the Bono area, including the, the, two, the new regions that have been created. What really does your membership look like? Thank you very much, my sister. If you come to the three regions I have for Bono East and Bono, the total membership of the bar stands at 66 zero. And out of this 660, we are talking of 45 in private practice, then about nine of them with the AG's office. Then you have some three lawyers at the legal aid, and then two lawyers at, Com at Commission Human Rights at the City Justice. So not more than 60 in the whole of the three regions that we have. My sister, we should have this one in mind. You come to Bong half for now, but now we have the three regions. The land size is almost 40,000 kilometers square, almost 40,000. Population per the 2010 census is, is 2.3 million. Currently, we have 2.5 million. So we strike the average. You realize that within 2.5 by 60, a lawyer in Bong Hapo handles not less than 38,516 I think it's just, it's just too much. And, and uh, fundamentally, how is this affecting the liberties of people, the justice delivery system in that part of the country? My, my brother is so terrible. Lawyers in the Bono, Bono East and Half region, apart from these three regions that we patronize, we also go to the Western North. We go to the Western North just boundary with Ahafo and then part of Bono region. So lawyers in this region have to go to that place. Lawyers in the region also have to go to sometimes upper west and then upper east, as of the northern region. So in terms of the numbers here and consider the number of things that we do, we are under very serious stress. Uh, and take it up. In the midst of that crisis you just painted for us, and people's liberties at stake, justice delivery at stake, which is as important as health uh, delivery because lives are there. When you listen to what is happening there with the law school and the uh, way people are being 
of a field on Mars. What's your reaction to it? Yes, it's rather unfortunate, and I cannot understand why certain things will happen. If it's an attempt to cut the numbers, then I think that's the wrong move. Unless genuinely students start the exams and then, for example, they're able to get the pass mark. Otherwise, the argument has been that oh, we have a lot of lawyers in the system, perhaps, and they say maybe in Accra. But those of us in the region, if you come to the AG's office, they need not, not less than 20 lawyers. If you go to human rights, they need not, not, not less than 10. If you go to legal aid, in fact, every district office in the region should be able to have a legal aid officer. You don't have them. In terms of prosecution, the whole region, we have one lawyer at the police, uh, at Ghana Police Service, who is a Jupo. Just one. And look at the land size and look at the people that we have there. So now, three regions, one, only one lawyer at the police headquarters as the regional Jupo. This is something that I think we should not be encouraging. Yeah. So, in terms of the exams that our students have gone through, I support the call by Dr. Uh, Professor Bonzi Simpson. We need to look into it. Yeah. Terra is not a mission of the students, but other, other entities. I'm, I'm grateful that you joined us uh, with your thoughts on this lawyer Chia, the, uh, as a president of the Bar Association in the part of, of the country. Of course, we may need the numbers, but standards cannot be lowered also. Uh, well, let's do sports now. Um, any hopes of being a lawyer soon or uh, going to law school? Well, I'm still thinking about it. Still uh, thinking? Yeah, exactly. Oh, why don't you jump into my boat? You want to be a lawyer? No. Okay, well, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> What well, do you have in the headline? We've got a lot of people thinking, and it has to do with the Ghana Football Association's presidential elections. Former Youth and Sports Minister Nilan Tivandapo has endorsed the former GFE Vice President Fred Papu to be the next Ghana Football Association president. Mr. Vandapoy reckons Fred Papu is the most qualified candidate among a list of six men and a woman vying for Ghana football's top job. If you ask me of all the people who are vying for the position, if I have a vote, I will vote for Fred Papu. Fred Papu has proven to be very decent. He's proven to be more knowledgeable. He's proven to be very efficient. He has good human relationship. He cares about football. He loves football. He cares about the development of football. And over the period, um, he's acquired a sort of expertise, the knowledge, and uh, let me say, the ability to be able to make things work. So that's former Youth and Sports Minister Neil Ante Vanderpoel. Another man vying for the um, GFA presidency is Nana Yamponsa. Now he's calling on members of the old GFA regime vying for the GFA top job to account for their previous stewardship rather than make new promises. I believe that it's not just about manifestos, it's about commitment to the vision that you have. So I am my own threat. If I continue to you know, do what I'm doing. I don't see anybody surprising me. And I'm Ponsade speaking, and um, that's it for sports. Evans. Thank you very much, Hans. Let's talk about sanitation now. It's day four of the Joy Clean Ghana campaign. Do you know North Kanishi? Oh, oh, oh yes, of I've course. I've always thought that is, uh, you know, a first class um, area. Well, and, until um, you go there. Until you go there. Mm. So today the team were there, and guess what they found? Nancy M. F. Jadusi has a wrap of today's event. The neighborhood appeared to be one without problems, but checks around the drain revealed fecal matter at the edges of the drain, with tubes from homes channeled into it. They use their hose, they, they hold there, and then they jump in, and then they do their own thing, and then they use their hose to clamp up again. The team then stormed the home of Alaji Baba. Alaji, yes. But you see this one. And was met with an eyesore. Raw excreta is being disposed, channeled through the house into the main drain, which is likely to lead to an outbreak of disease. Who did it? It's my brother. Your brother. Can I see? I want you to see it properly. Yeah, I've seen it. You've seen it? Yes. And since your brother did it, did you tell him that this thing that he has done is wrong? Because you are the head of the house. Listen, I told him. Uh -huh. He didn't listen to me. Even though he kept justifying the situation, the team found more offenses. The cover break. So the, and the, 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 I, I want you to admit. And uh, stones. It's good to say you are sorry than to defend yeah. the wrong that you are doing. Shortly after, the team was met by some residents who were angry with some nuisance they had observed in their neighborhood. From the main Abeka public toilet running through this drain and it has been left under this gutter, they opened the toilet either 
in the evenings or early mornings and you can be here the adult you can it gives us sickness we've got children here and this is an international school just behind the bridge mr asitanga had a solution what we will do is that you people have to help us let's break kissel under yeah. or here break here kissel then we prepare some sand concrete hard concrete sand yeah. i get me then we push it so we, from there, you'll be monitoring, the owner will come to see why the pipe is not flowing. And the team is taking action against this particular uh, house. Uh, you don't want to be caught in that. And so uh, make sure your, your environments are clean. Hashtag. Joy Clean Ghana. Let's head to the church now. Do you pay tithe? I'm sure it will be very hefty. <laughs> well, that is if I do. <laughs> now, the General Secretary of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, uh, Reverend Imano uh, Tiabe Ebariga, has been defending his call for churches to probe the backgrounds of uh, their members who pay hefty tithes. He's been speaking to uh, Max Ababa. Listen to uh, For those whose sources of income we are not very sure of, uh, because the fact of the matter is that uh, there are very prosperous business men or churches who are engaged in very genuine business, who, when they give their tithes according to the kind of profits they make from their businesses, uh, will turn out to be huge. So we don't have to go behind them to go and find out how they are earning their money uh, before giving such uh, uh, tithes or offerings. Uh, so I was talking about those whose sources of income may be questionable, uh, looking at the kind of job that they do and the kind of offerings and tithes that you bring uh, to the church. So that is the context of the... But what do you also make of some suggestions out there that um, the church should also be partly blamed? What people, some people describe as the corruption menace, because they said even in the church, um, corruption one way or the other in some churches is kind of celebrated because even for positions available in the church, it only goes to people who are wealthy. If, if, if you don't have the money, uh, there's no way. What do you make of some of these assertions out there? Well, for the council to which I belong, which is the Ghana Pentecost and Charismatic Council, mm -hmm. and knowing the background of the churches which belong to the council, uh, we do not do that. We do not give the highest positions to uh, those who uh, give the, the biggest offering. Well, but uh, other churches do. But uh, he goes on to suggest ways that can be dealt with. But you support that? Probe the background? I didn't listen. You didn't listen? No. You pay your tithe? <laughs> yes, I do. I have to one, of course. Yes, I do. And the church will be to starting. God, we'll, I give anything. We'll, we'll start a probe into it, your background. We'll see where you it's get the fine. money from. It's By the fine. way, you know the uh, Joy Clean and Ghana campaign has been going on. Mm -hmm. And so, of it's course. In collaboration with the AMA. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. what's AMA? We've been asking. What is the AMA? What's the full meaning of AMA? It'll be what? Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Mm. AMA is, is, is what?